my first time viewing your work. Uh, I'm deeply moved by it, and one of the reasons is there's both a sense of familiarity and that which is completely new, which you balance, I think, really extraordinarily well. And that is uh, a reconsideration in the Western sense and Eastern sense, and maybe beyond, of the notion of landscape and what space means. And if you think, in general, of art in the Western world, particularly, but not only, and in other parts of the world, dealing either with the body or space, you're a space artist who's dealing with the idea of geomorphology, mathematics, what we call science, which is a way of understanding the world, as opposed to phenomenology, which is a direct experiencing of the world. So to me, in these digital recreations, for all of their superb synthesis, they are actually evoking in me something which I would describe as quite primal, even though they're through the veil of very contemporary language. And so you have the idea of something which is ancient with something which is contemporary, and for me, what's unnerving in a good way is the idea of finding a meeting point between what I've described as time-based as opposed to eternal reality, and the same as that with space, when space becomes infinity. And so you bring us back, and in an era of high-tech, in every sense, CGI and other things in Hollywood and other filmmaking traditions, you bring your skills to bear in a way that brings it back to the poetic rather than merely the sensational. And because you require of us to be sentient, not just receivers, we give to as we accept from what it is you're offering us. So it's a normal human condition, I think, to find familiarity where it may, there might be difference in order to find kind of bearings. But you would allow us to, in a sense, um, encourage us to imagine or to allow our imagination to fire up. And so any great artist, I think, at their heart is delivering to, through the form of communication, a starting point for other people's imagination. So you generously provide the arena within which our imaginations will fire up and, in a sense, finish the work. So for all the work you've done, each one of us in this room and every other place you show, depending on culture, background, experience, are going to respond obviously in different ways. But I think the drama is when something is kinetic and dynamic like this, as opposed to being static, it has a different kind of way of entering into our consciousness. And as I said to you earlier, what I saw and I thought of when I first saw this work was the writings of Gordon Onslow Ford and the paintings of Roberto Mata and Gordon Onslow Ford. There's a group here in San Francisco in the 50s that you need to research called Dynaton, which featured three main artists. That was Gordon Onslow Ford, Mata and Lee Mulliken, and Wolfgang Parlin. And these artists were the first explorers in the Western tradition of what are called psychic landscapes. And uh, that has connotations which can be very negative, but I mean by that a primal sense of the immaterial world being experienced and re-evaluated through the processes of creativity, which is what's going on here. So uh, I've got a lot to think about now. You've shown me some amazing stuff. And I must mention to you, there's also the idea of the mathematical as opposed to the natural, the organic. The digital, obviously, in its facility to beguile us and to hold us in a number of ways, our attention, because of its immaculate, seamless presentation, is usually not associated with something which is much more sensual or visceral or psychological. But you balance within this clean, immaculate world, you actually evoke a sense of the sensual and the spiritual at the same time in ways that I think is extremely powerful.